Hello, hello, I'm Brutton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Welcome back. Today, we're exploring another high yield topic on the psych -Soch section, self-concept, identity formation, and various developmental theories to help you better understand human development. Let's jump on in. Let's start with the self-concept. Self-concept is referring to the sum of ways in which we describe ourselves. It consists of individual identities related to the groups we belong to. Our self-esteem is affected by how close our actual self is to our ideal self and our ought self. This is known as the self-discrepancy theory. The further away we are from the ideal and ought self, the more distressed we are, whether that's more depression or more anxiety. We also have self-efficacy, which is representing the degree to which we see ourselves as capable in a given skill or situation. This is related to the concept of learned helplessness, which is a state of hopelessness relating from the inability to avoid repeated negative stimuli, usually due to a low internal locus of control and a high external locus of control. A classic example of learned helplessness is by doing a Morris water maze in which you take a rat and you let it swim in a tub until it gives up and then it just floats there because the rat knows it cannot escape. So it develops learned helplessness, which is a model of depression. Next up, we have Freud's psychosexual stages of personality development. Freud proposed that personality development is based on tensions caused by the libido. Failure at any stage leads to a fixation, which can cause different personality disorders. These stages are starting with the oral stage from birth to your first year. This is where the erogenous zone, the zone that the libido is focused on, is the mouth, which makes sense because babies are sucking on nipples for milk. The next stage we have is the anal stage, age one to three. This is the erogenous zone here is bowel and bladder control. Somebody who has failed in the anal stage can be called anal retentive later on. Next, from ages three to six, the erogenous zone are the genitals. And almost to the end, we're in the latent stage, which is, which is six to puberty. This is where the libido is inactive, and it's just kids being kids. Once puberty starts, we enter the final psychosexual stage, known as the genital stage. This is from puberty all the way to death, and is when people begin maturing sexual interest in others. Next, we have Erickson's stages stemming from conflicts throughout life. First, we have trust versus mistrust in infancy. So this is from years zero to one, where an infant learns to trust their caregiver if their basic needs such as food and comfort are met consistently. If not, they may develop mistrust. Next, we have autonomy versus shame. This is from ages one to three, where a toddler learns to be independent by exploring their environment, like attempting to dress themselves. If they are overly criticized or controlled, they may develop a sense of shame. Next, we have initiative versus guilt, where a child learns to take initiative by planning and carrying out activities. However, if their actions are consistently met with disapproval, they may develop a sense of guilt. Then ages 6 to 12 are industry versus inferiority. This is when school-aged children learn to develop a sense of competence by mastering academic and social skills. If they struggle or feel inadequate, they may develop a sense of inferiority. Next, from ages 12 to 20, we have the identity versus role confusion. This is your classic teenager where adolescents are grappling with developing a sense of identity by exploring their beliefs, values, and goals. If they cannot establish a clear sense of self, they may experience role confusion. Next, we have intimacy and isolation from ages 20 to 40. This is where young adults form intimate relationships, such as friendships and romantic partners. If they struggle to connect with others, they may experience isolation. Then in the middle ages, 40 to 65, adults are seeking to contribute to future generations through work, family, or community involvement. If they fail to find meaning in these pursuits, they may experience stagnation. And then finally, 65 to death, we have integrity versus despair. This is where older adults are reflecting on their lives seeking a sense of accomplishment and satisfaction. If they feel regret or disappointment, they may experience despair. The final stages of moral development we're going to talk about today are Kohlberg stages. 
These are based on different moral dilemmas with six stages, each having three phases. Let's talk about the classic Heinz dilemma. It's a classic example where a man named Heinz must decide whether to steal an expensive drug to save his wife's life. Let's begin with the pre-conventional stage, obedience and punishment. A child may say that Heinz shouldn't steal the drug because he might get caught and punished. Then if we move up to more conventional, in individualism and exchange, a person at this stage might argue that Heinz should steal the drug because it benefits him directly. And then at the conventional stages, we have good boy attitude and law and order. So for the good interpersonal relationships or a good boy, a person might say that Heinz should steal the drug because he loves his wife and wants to be a good husband. We could also look at it from a law and order standpoint, which says a person at the stage might argue that Heinz should not steal the drug because it would disrupt the social order and create chaos. And then finally, we start entering the post-conventional stage, which is 13 and beyond. This is when we have things like universal ethics and the social contract. So if we argue from the social contract perspective, a person might say that Heinz should steal the drug because the law is unjust and everyone has a right to life. Similarly, with the universal ethical principles, a person at this stage might argue that Heinz should steal the drug based on the principle of valuing human life above all else, regardless of the consequences or societal values. Quickly want to give a few important vocab things to you, starting with Zygotsky's zone of proximal development. So Vygotsky introduced the zone of proximal development, which represents the skills a child has not yet mastered and requires a more knowledgeable other to accomplish. We also have the reference group. This is the group to which we compare ourselves, influencing our self-concept and identity. So in this case, here's a person who is basing their self-identity based on some jacked guy in a hat. As you prepare for the MCAT, keep these concepts in mind to rock the psych-so section. Good luck and happy studying. Thank you so much for watching our videos, and I'll see you next time.